Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Seeds of Music, the web's number one resource for independent artists. I'm your host Kyle Williams and this is our weekly web show where I bring on independent artists and full-time do-it-yourself musicians to talk about the ways in which they can build bigger, stronger fan bases and sell more music online and at their shows. If you haven't yet, you can sign up to our audio-only podcast, which is basically the web show but an audio-only version. Just go over to iTunes and punch in Seeds of Music, rise above the noise and click subscribe. You'll get all the episodes downloaded straight to your mobile device. And if you got an extra second, it would really, really, really help us out here if you leave a rating and a review. It'll improve our rankings in iTunes, give the show more exposure, help more artists, and it'll allow me to get bigger and better interviews for you. Today on the show is pretty, pretty cool. It's the first episode where I've had everyone in a in a band. This is like four people, uh, four piece indie world pop group called Ed Ghost Tucker, and we've got all of them on the show here today. Fortunately, all the audio worked out, so I'm really stoked about that, uh, to have so many people on the show and have so much feedback, and honestly, to have more than one person to field questions to. Uh, So what we're going to be talking about is how an aspiring indie band balances creativity and business, because, you know, you have to implement one type of creativity to create your music, and then you have to put on a different hat when it comes to the business side, which is marketing your music, which is basically just getting it out there, because if you don't get it out there, no one's going to hear right so uh, this is a band that embraces fan interaction on social media and they have a certain method of how they split social media focus between each band member Um, they also put together a great uh, music video with awesome production utilizing uh, just the network that they were working with plus they were able to record on a super super tight uh, budget and uh, also uh, we're going to talk about the advantages to being open-minded to learning new things because for a lot of us musicians we're kind of stuck in our old ways and uh, you know music's hard enough but learning something new outside of that is seems even ha- harder but music doesn't exist in a vacuum and you have to have a specific type of ma- a mentality to be able to balance uh, music and the business so let's jump right in all right, this is a very special episode of Seeds of Music. I actually have an entire band on the show for for the first time. It was a very pleasant surprise for me. So thank you to all the members of Ed Ghost Tucker. All right, Ryan, Hello. Rutger, Cameron, and uh, Michaela. 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 Oh, it's okay. I, oh. It's a weird one. <laughs> I said it. I, first I said Michaela, and then <laughs> Michaela. My, my, my Okay, (laughs) I'm gonna screw that up again, probably eventually. (laughs) So, um, you guys are a four-piece indie world pop group from from San Diego, and you guys are hustling, hustling it out there, doing a lot of the promotion and marketing. Um, When did you first actually start taking control of the promotion and marketing for your band? Um, Since the beginning, yeah, we've been a band for just under two years, and. yeah, from day one, we just we've been promoting ourselves on our own, and yeah, we we set up the you know we set up the Facebook account and Twitter, you know, all the social media from day one, pretty much. And yeah, originally, uh, Mikhailo was our manager. Um, In quotations. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's because the position sort of like gets shifted around. Uh, to all of us, sort of. Okay. So we sort of all share that responsibility to a certain extent, but when someone has more time, they sort of take on most of it, but it shifts around. Okay. And, and uh, so, did you is it, do you find that that seems to work better for you instead of just saying, okay, you're in charge of? I mean, do you do it like this where? You know, uh, Ryan, you're in charge of the Facebook account, or Rucker, you're in charge of the Twitter account. Um, I mean, do you find it works better to kind of just have one person be the manager and do all the accounts and switch that around? I mean, at this point, we're all pretty, like, we like to all be pretty much hands-on. So <laughs> mm-hmm. even if we're doing a Facebook post, um, I mean, Twitter, Ryan mans, like, pretty solely, but... Um, for like any Facebook post or any email that we're getting back to, you know, bookers or um, or anyone, we all kind of have a hand at like editing it or at least reviewing it before it's sent out. So, um, yeah, the responsibilities like do ship. So if somebody has more time, then they, you know, so take you guys, that on. But. So you guys, um, do you uh, ever get emails from fans besides, uh, you know, people for booking shows? 
Yeah, uh -huh. we do on occasion, yeah. Um, we just released a music video, so we got some nice feedback from nice. that, yeah, yeah, which was nice. Um, yeah, and on Facebook, you know, after shows and stuff on occasion. So, yeah. do, you, um, do you guys, uh, are you focusing on building an email list right now? I mean, what are you guys doing for that? Do you pass around the yeah. clipboard or...? Uh, we don't do that at shows, but we have an email list uh, that, I mean, we started to in the beginning. Yeah, we, but, we started it basically online, so like our fans could sign, you know, everybody signed up online basically at this point. And, and we have uh, an option on Facebook. Option on Facebook. Yeah. We're kind of blowing it by not having it at our shows, but we, it keeps, yeah. we keep forgetting about it, to be honest. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's definitely really, really important, but for a lot of people, I mean, I always recommend that... Uh, musicians or bands, artists uh, don't use a clipboard, but um, you know, you provide like a printout with a QR code that links to your website where you have the email sign up. You know, and then you give away like a free uh, download of some kind. You know, as an incentive to sign up up for that. But yeah. um, so right now you're working on uh, your latest music video for Sophia, correct? Or, or you yeah, just released it? Yeah. Um, but how did you uh i mean how did you come about because it's a it's a very nice video uh you know for guys you know for basically it looks really nice and looks like it looks like it could have cost a lot of money but i'm curious like how did you guys put that together how did you fund the music video as an independent artist like in your situation it, uh, it actually kind of unfolded for us really organically from like we didn't set out really to make a super high production value music video. We had been in contact with uh, a local videographer who we had seen some of her work and she invited us to do this thing, this like really low key performance thing where she takes bands out onto like a street in San Diego and you do this, it's called like a sidewalk serenade. So we had been talking about doing one of those with her and that's like, you know, just basically, you know, the cameras on tripods in the street, so not a super high production value thing, but uh, after going back and forth with her and the scheduling kind of like not working out, she referred us to a few friends of hers who wanted to take a more uh, kind of, you know, um, music video approach where we have, uh, yeah, I don't know, just different kinds of setups, not these like in the street thing, but something that we would actually like flesh out a performance aspect and then they wanted to pursue a story aspect. So it kind of happened where we were geared up to do this one project and then we got referred to this other project. And so from there, we just kind of started building ideas around uh, what we could do with a little more, uh, you know, open options and stuff like that. And so when we started talking to these guys, we just kind of were still in that mindset of trying to keep it really cheap for ourselves. So we were starting to like pool resources amongst ourselves and we figured, okay, like we'll need a cool location. So we, I, I live in the space that we shot the video in, we figured we could just like clear out all my crap and have, you know, have our stuff set up and just kind of decorate the room in some way that would work. And then we, uh, knew these dancers through a connection of Michaela's and so we were just kind of thinking of like trying to max out the sort of resources that we could come up with just on our own and then these guys uh, who we got referred to Snow Globe Studios um, they had all this equipment from their video production company and they hadn't done music videos yet before so they were kind of excited to see what we could do in this kind of DIY state of mind and uh yeah so combined with their they kind of brought the production value as far as all that gear goes and then we just were able to put our heads together and come up with uh some cool looking like content for the video and uh yeah because it was awesome i mean especially if you guys have only been together for two years to to be able to you know the music's great and to be also have um you know, someone else from your personal connections, your personal network to come out and create this like beautiful work of art to go along with that. Um, I think is, is really impressive. I mean, to you, like how important is, are the personal relationships you have? Uh, like I'd say, I want to say like your network, but I know network can kind of turn 
or, or I'm a musician too. It kind of it's kind of can turn the artist off, but it really just means the personal connections you have with people outside of your music. I mean, how important has that been to you in gaining this kind of traction? I think it's uh, pretty key for independent artists to have that network, especially with um, other independent artists, because that was really the key how we were able to do a professional music video uh, using, you know, $35,000 camera with the budget of under $300 mm -hmm. was that their production team was sort of at the same level as we are in terms of, like, sort of independent artists as well. Okay. And so what we've been able to do is build those relationships uh, and create this sort of network where we're able to work together and um, it's kind of like grow together. Yeah, and like benefit each other, like help each other's uh, independent projects grow. Okay. And I think that's really the key to doing it yourself these days. So just it just and, it, and you I remember you you mentioned it happened organically too. So it's like this idea of like you just be genuine because you guys I mean seem really genuine i mean i know it's over skype but you know i would have you i'd have you over for a beer <laughs> so it's like that likewise yeah 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 so oh, there we go you know just uh fly fly out to long beach i'm not well too far away from san diego um but just the the fact of being genuine and and having good artistry you know uh, respect for your craft then it's like you naturally bring in these these other people on your same level because if you were trying to, to I mean it's more difficult to go after production companies that are um, that are well established because you know then they're going to be looking obviously they're a business yeah. uh, first and foremost but um, so it's kind of uh, just tapping into the the independent artist network of all different kinds of crafts like whether it's yeah. production or whatnot um, and a lot a lot of what that comes down to for us is that we don't we don't have a lot of money to to spend right now so it's it's yeah, we're doing it out of necessity, really. Yeah. What are some other ha uh, uh, hacks that you come up with? Uh, and I'm, I don't mean hack as in like hack. I mean like hacker. You know, it's a hack. It's yeah. some it's an online marketing term, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah. like, uh, what what are some hacks that you've figured out to to get around um, the issue of money in other areas of your music career? It. I mean, the immediate thing I can think of is just the way we've been able to come about recordings without paying the, uh, you know, standard studio fees and engineering fees. And that has, that's just been who we know, you know, like our first batch of recordings that we put on SoundCloud when we first got together was done with uh, my college roommate who was studying music at UCSD and so he had access to the campus studio and we got in there so that I don't know if that uh, qualifies as a hack that's another just kind of like told, networking yeah. thing but yeah that's that's been a major one and, and coming up uh, kind of our next project that we have on the burners right now is um, more recording with with just buddies and people who are trying to build up their experience uh, recording bands and we are just like open to you know working with people on that level and learning with them and yeah just getting whatever we can out of it because it's gonna cost us next to nothing to go into those situations because it's it's buddies of ours and yeah. so that's been that's that's super key for getting those kind of products uh, put down at this point without any cash and I think <coughs> I think frankly just uh, the openness to knowledge because it's all out there like the internet has you know everything the basically. library the internet you can get a kindle and then have the entire knowledge of the human race in one spot <laughs> it's yeah. it's mind blowing if you think about it I mean most people don't care average person doesn't care but you know yeah but so <laughs> so basically you just gotta be like a sponge and just um, absorb or be willing to absorb as much of that knowledge as you can and you can you know do a lot of crazy things with that so yourself uh what about like absorbing knowledge when it comes to um the business aspect of your your music careers you know because that's it's uh, i mean that's equal I, it's equally important i mean 
and but I know as a musician, you know, even before I even started studying uh, marketing, I used to have all these like like perceptions of the business and in marketing. I mean, how how exactly open are you guys to um, absorbing information on the marketing and, and, and promotion? We're we're really open to it. I mean, I know Ryan is always <clears throat> um, doing research on marketing and promotion and all this Thumbs stuff. Thumbs up, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're we're really open to it. We're constantly trying to learn about the business. I like I read a lot of like legal stuff to try to figure out to try to be able to talk to our attorney and okay. <clears throat> sort of understand everything he's saying. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we're really open to <clears throat> learning yeah, all of that stuff. Yeah, and you guys, you guys aren't alone. I mean, there's there's lots of artists that have like a graph, you know, like a big uh, one of the largest ones I can think of right now is Bruce Springsteen. You know, like he's great artist, you know, very creative, but you know, he understands that that other side to um, <coughs> to his, you know to his art. And in a sense, like uh, I mean, what do you what's your perception of marketing? Because I know musicians are so resistant to learning it and it's like in my opinion it's the number one reason a lot of bands fails because they they're like oh i'm not good at promoting myself or marketing is evil and <laughs> capitalist but like what what's the the way that you view it that allows you to be so open to learning it well i, I mean for me it's like if if you're not marketing <laughs> yourself or if, it, if, if your marketing isn't working out nobody's hearing your your material really. Yeah. I mean, except for the people that are at your live shows, and we you know we've, we're learning. We've learned that your live show is it can't carry you to where we want to be. Yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah, it just kind of got for us. It's just been kind of like just get it done so that people can hear the stuff. I mean, I don't think there's any egotistical anything going on there. It's just it's just kind of like yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I I I understand like the whole wariness about uh promoting yourself and everything yeah um and like appearing to i don't know cocky or needy or something oh, yeah. but unfortunately you know music and art doesn't exist in a vacuum so you have to it's meant to be shared you, yeah you have to get it out there some, yeah. somehow um and i think the key that we try to strike a balance of like <clears throat> You know, not being too overly self-promoted, mm -hmm. like sort of holding back a little bit, but still getting our stuff out there and being as visible as we can in the way that we want to. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I've learned is that, um, like, essentially, all all marketing and sales is because eventually you want to, you know, be able to make some kind of income to do this full time, right? So. Uh, one thing I've learned is marketing and sales is just like merely good communication. Like I'm able to communicate to you, and now this is good marketing and sales. The bad marketing and sales is the one that's like, wait, there's more, buy now, buy, you know, all that, you know, crap <laughs> yeah, commercial. Yeah. That's bad. I mean, the reason they do that is because it's so annoying you don't forget it, you know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but like it's like good marketing uh, and good sales skills is just being able to communicate the value of what you have to offer and you know in a very genuine way and there's nothing more genuine than you can offer than than music you know as long as that music comes from the heart which i can just tell and i can listen to something i'm tooting my own horn but if i can just listen to something i can i can tell if that's coming from someone's heart and yeah. i definitely get it from you guys uh your guys's music um so that's thumbs up on keeping open uh to the marketing sales because that's your that's your that's how you're going to share your message with the world. You know, yeah. your message is the music and the rest is just being able to share it with everyone. And, uh, so, uh, sorry for that little rant there. Um, no, it's good stuff. but you know, for the video itself, like what, what are your plans? Like, how are you going to use, uh, the video to help more people hear your music? Well, <laughs> uh, well, so our our initial like push was to push it locally. So we <coughs> built okay. some nice relationships with um, some local blogs, um, and uh, and so they kind of like released it first, 
So San Diego got this kind of, I don't know, little early release to it, I guess. But anyone can see it if they just went on to a San Diego blog, I guess. Um, and then we kind of made a secondary push to blogs in LA. Okay. Um, and uh, and kind of like now that's like there's a national push, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I guess just like those kind of connections um, have helped with that. And like the video goes to like, you know, our Vimeo page, I guess. But then the blogs have also put down our Facebook and I think our Twitter account usually on most of them too. So, and I think our SoundCloud so they can like go to and access like our archives or whatever. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, what, what are we trying to do with it? I guess we're just trying to, it's our first, it's kind of our first visual like representation of, well, of, with a real track that we're like, that we're actually, we, we're proud of, I guess. It's one of our first releases, so we're we're putting more effort into this one thing and pushing it out to as many people as we can, I guess. Yeah, and our next move uh, is to go <clears throat> to the more national blogs. We got <clears throat> a write-up on Ear Milk for our video. Uh, Ear Milk, it sounds kind of gross, like if you... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, oh. Uh, Get it out. Yeah, <laughs> I say that every time. Yeah, uh, um, but yeah. So figure out how to uh, best do that in terms of staggering. Sorry for the congestion, by the way. I just said <clears throat> no right. surgery. So. No surgery. <coughs> yeah. They cut it um, open and then like reconstruct it, or <laughs> yeah, I got a nose job. No, no I, <laughs> uh, just to fix the deviated septum. So I can breathe better, but it's not working well right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone um, else, uh, you can let, let someone else suck the floor if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, basically figuring out how to stagger those national pushes to get it spread out as uh, best as possible. Mm -hmm. So we're so we're so small; it's hard to get any, anybody to pay attention. Really, I mean, you know, it's, it's, or just to grab anybody's attention. So we're we're working through that. Yeah. Well, you still you're still um, still early on, you know. Yeah. Um, but you're on the right path when you're open to learning new things, especially open to learning uh, about the business side that most artists neglect. I can, you know, and and really, it's just it's it is like a long it is a long haul, you know. You just have to be able to tell yourself, like, how long will you stick with it? You know? yeah. But um, I think uh, evidence of, like, your progress, you know, for making the connections to make the video, um, you know, the shows that you have played, uh, you know, there's a lot of you're com there's a lot of noise to, to compete with, but you push through with, you know, the willingness to learn and having good quality music, you know, and visuals to go with that. So you're definitely on the right path there. Um, so uh, you guys are open right now uh, to, uh, you know, I mentioned, uh, I know I know the Seeds of Music show is about, you know, do-it-yourself musicians uh, working without uh, a label. Uh, what's, what exactly, uh, I mean, you guys are going to be looking towards maybe a, a small label record, record deal. Uh, what, you know, what's the thoughts behind that? Well, we want to record our, we have a lot of songs that aren't down on record, and, and we want to record them. And I know we are open to any help from on the production side as well. Okay. That kind of excites us because that's just okay. a possibility of making it better. Okay. Um, so it's mostly yeah. just mostly just help with recording and, and production, but you're not necessarily uh, thinking about. Uh, because I know the small labels, they may, probably don't have marketing budgets, so that would still be up to you. Um, so you, for you, it's mostly just recording and production? Um, I think, I mean, I don't know. I think that there's also just, um, I mean, there's a lot that we have been able to do on our own mm -hmm. um, and a lot of shows that we've been able to book on our own um, with, like, you know, nice national acts and stuff. But... I think that there's also um, we're seeking some help to get like onto like a larger platform, so okay. playing more festivals um, and stuff. And I think 
I don't know, like we hired our first member of our team, which is our, our attorney, and um, he's the one that is shopping us right now. And so, and it actually, I mean, while the majority are small labels, um, we haven't, um, like, I don't know, not included large labels. <coughs> so those are in there also that we're seeking out too. Um, and it's really, we're just looking for a, a label that is like going to be the best fit for us, like Rhett said. So mm -hmm. if that comes, like if right now it doesn't come with a marketing package, but they're going to <coughs> offer us something that, you know, we all yeah. are comfortable with in the moment um, with like a limited, I don't know, like a, I don't know. Time frame, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. It, we're... <laughs> it's all confusing. Yeah, but we're, um, yeah, I guess we're just kind of open to whatever comes our way. So yeah. the com and the conversations have been open, which is nice. But um, and uh, no, I'm done. <laughs> um, one interesting thing about working with this attorney is that his focus uh, is sort of international. Like he has written some books about you know how, or like he does a lot of lectures and stuff just about the international music business. And so a lot of his ideas and a lot of the the work that he's been doing uh, has really kind of geared us to keep a super open mind about some of his opportunities may be uh, things that happen on their biggest level in Japan or in Germany or some some other market where he kind of has a good idea for how to situate us, how to strategize it all and everything, but it's something that's just like literally completely foreign to what we know about, you know, music and business and trying to make some money with this music, so it's it's kind of put us into this space where anytime we have a conversation where he updates us with what he's working on, we just have to be really receptive and be very like, okay, wow, so you know, Tokyo is where that office is, and like those people know that market, and we'll see if they feel like we'll be able to enter it, and mm -hmm. you know, we're just trying to keep an open mind, but for now, you know, we're just we're just doing it local and. Yeah, if it goes to that global yeah. scale, we'll just we'll adjust and just keep keep playing the songs and you know figure out what it's going to mean to our business to do it on a different scale. But and and um, quickly, I, I if if we don't get label support, I don't think it's it's definitely not the end of the journey for us. And, and what we've been learning lately is that uh, <coughs> that's a, a trend that's happening. I think is larger brands will are taking on bands uh, under their wing and and. You know the bands are using the brands as a as a vehicle mm -hmm. to get their stuff heard. So that's also an option. I mean, I don't think we're just like we're we're just tunnel vision down a label. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the worst thing. Yeah, I guess the worst. That's um, it's. I don't know. Like, what's more likely that or shark attack? I think, <laughs> shark, I think a shark attacks attacks more more likely. But, uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, classic. <laughs> Oh man! Actually, I'm actually originally from Florida, and uh, whenever you go out in the water, uh, I saw like a helicopter view picture of like a bunch of people who were like, "Yay!" Like it's playing in the water, and there's sharks everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sharks everywhere, like all around them. But, <laughs> so <laughs> they, they weren't into eating people, I guess. <laughs> it's very thank God. <laughs> so um, you know I. I actually took a train trip around the U.S. like in 2009 in San Diego. It was one of the places I visited because I was actually thinking about uh, where to move because I was moving from from Florida. Um, I really like San Diego. How do you guys like San Diego and its music scene? <coughs> it's it's good. It's been small. I know there's a hesitation there. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard. It's hard when you look at LA and there's all the cool stuff going on out there, really. But we, I think, we have. It's been it's been surprising, though. I mean, yeah. there have been some uh, some good surprises, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, I didn't coming back. I didn't go in with like huge expectations. Okay. Um, but I think it's definitely it's sort of proved me wrong um, to a certain extent, and that there is really cool stuff happening here you just gotta and in any city really you just gotta look for it yeah and, yeah just be making the effort to, yeah. to get yeah. out there yeah. okay yeah. so it's small but it's nice and it's been really inclusive too 
which is no, we've, been, we've been lucky with nice. the support from everybody. Yeah. Are there? I mean, are there people in San Diego who go out because they want to hear new music? Yeah, I mean, it's small. Like I, I think that um, San Diego tends to, um, I don't know, cater to more of like the EDM scene or like the clubbing, like especially like Gaslamp um, district and everything. Like there's kind of more of like a club vibe and it's probably mostly because it's a tourist city. So they have, you know, oh, gotcha. yeah. but, um, but it's, I mean, there, there is a population that goes out and sees live music. So, um, but I don't think you get the wanderers like you would in a New York or a somewhere right. like that. They were just, you know, they're filling the bar because they're, 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 down to have a couple of drinks and see some music. Yeah. It's, that's yeah. less likely. It's less there likely. are there are definitely shows where the crowd clears out with each yeah. band, and yeah, you know you bring in. your crowd, and it's like okay, and then yeah. you finish yeah. the set, and they all leave, kind of thing. Like it's not it's not the the super typical way it goes, but it happens. It's kind of yeah. small. Well, it's kind of just uh, it's like indicative of the fact that you have your own fan base that you build, you know, that comes up to your shows, and that's more solid of a strategy like building that fan base and relationships with them is more solid of a strategy than you know waiting for wayfarers or wanderers to yeah. come yeah. to wander into the live show be like mm-hmm. all right you know and then how are they going to connect with you well they're going to do it through an email sign up yeah. or they're yeah. going to follow you on facebook or twitter so you have to be on stage that you know talking about that or have some way for them to to connect in that way yeah, and uh, that aspect of it, of um, you know, building a solid fan base, has been really good for our development because it forces us to give those people something different at each show, mm-hmm. or at least try to. You know, if we have if we have shows three weeks apart, we want to make sure that the people who came out last time, we have a new song, or we've done enough work on the songs that we played at the last one to kind of keep it interesting. And they've to this point, they keep coming back and they they tell us about how they how they appreciate that kind of you know the newness every time we play because it is it is a very like tight knit kind of you know and I would, treat those people, I would treat those people like gold yeah you know, yeah i treat them yeah. like gold i mean like go above and beyond to reach out to them and connect with them like outside of the music you know and you yeah. can do that you know in you know if you can either do that, you do it in person at a show, which is the most powerful. You know, I always recommend get off stage afterwards and go into the crowd and talk to people. Don't ever walk off and just, <laughs> yeah. and then be like, peace. Don't ever do that. Um, so if you're a- if you're anti-social, that get the social person of the band to go out there <laughs> and, and talk to people. Uh, but yeah, just I mean, people who who um, are part of that fan base, you know, that's treat them like gold because they're more likely to purchase something you know when when you put it out and they're purchasing it not only because they like the music because it's not just liking the music isn't enough it's the the feeling that they get from having that relationship with you along with the music does that make yeah. sense yeah absolutely all right guys well sure. um this has been an awesome epic four person <laughs> four on one interview um, hope it worked I'm, out yeah i'm glad it worked out i mean you guys had it together with the the mic splitters and then the two <laughs> Each year, yeah. each year, I was like, literally, when I when I when I came on, I was like, holy shit, there's like more. <laughs> I was like, I hope there's no echo and whatnot, but it seems like everything worked out. So again, all you guys, uh, all you members of Ed Ghost Tucker, I'm not gonna run through the names again because I think I'm gonna mess her name up. Uh, <laughs> thanks again for coming on the show, man. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And that wraps up this week's episode of Seeds of Music on the show. We had all of the members of Ed Ghost Tucker, the indie world pop group based out of San Diego. Check their links out below and show the love and show your support. Next, if you haven't yet, sign up for our email newsletter. It's free and you'll get updates on new interviews, vlog episodes, articles, plus special newsletter only content to help you build a bigger fan base and sell more music online. Do you like listening to just the audio? Don't like watching 
the videos, maybe my face is too ugly to stare at or whatever, we actually have an iTunes podcast. Head over to iTunes and search Seeds of Music Rise Above the Noise. And when it pops up, hit subscribe and you'll get all the episodes downloaded automatically. How awesome is that? Plus, leave a rating and a review because if you do that, not only will I love you forever, but I will feature your rating and review on an episode of Seeds of Music, give you a shout out and give you some love because that's helping us rank higher, help more musicians and get bigger and better interviews. If you really like this interview and you want to share it on Facebook, but go ahead and do that. Hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the tweet button, and spread this message far and wide. And lastly, comment on the video. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Are you an inspiring independent artist who is using social media to help build your fan base? Are you looking to record on a super tight budget? Or are you looking to make a great music video with awesome production and just need some idea on how to utilize or build a network in order to do that? Just leave a comment and let us know. Do you know someone who would be awesome to have on this show? Or is that person you? Send me an email to kyle.seedsamusic at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you and possibly have you on the show as a guest. At the most, it might take me two days to get back to you, but I'm telling you, I answer every email that comes through my inbox. Remember, we are the future of music.